Good afternoon, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our Lunchtime Webinar Express series. We've got a fascinating session today with Jordana Goldstein, who will be talking us through and also demonstrating some mindfulness techniques. If you would like to share any thoughts about today's webinar on the socials, you can use the hashtag CIM events. Okay, so now it's time for me to introduce our guest speaker for today's session, Jordana Goldstein. If you'd like to turn your webcam on, Jordana, I'll pass things over to you and away you go when you're ready. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming today to uh, this webinar, um, Healing Through the Present Moment, Mindfulness for Marketing. Um, we're going to cover a little bit of my story, how I came to mindfulness and how it was helpful in my own life. Um, what is mindfulness? The healing benefits. Uh, mindfulness as it pertains to marketing. The 10 attitudes. The practice itself and the phases of a mindful meditation. And then we're actually going to do a practice and then we'll go into the Q&A. So, um, in my early 20s, I was a professional dancer in New York City, and I came down with Graves' disease, which is a hyperthyroid condition. And uh, it put me on a, a whole other path where I was determined to heal myself. So I went to massage school, and I studied yoga and meditation, and I met a Zen Buddhist monk, and uh, I worked with her one-on-one. -on -one, and um, and in group and she taught me mindfulness and it changed my life i became conscious of a lot of things that were hidden inside of me the shadow uh aspects of myself fears and insecurities and um, things that nutrition yoga and other forms of meditation weren't accessing and so eventually i was able to heal myself of what's considered to be an incurable disease. And so for me, mindfulness became a passion um, in my healing toolbox. Um, and since then, I have been spending the last 30 years of my life guiding people to heal themselves through the paths of body work, meditation, yoga, and mindfulness and breath work. I have a center in outside of Barcelona um, where I do all of that work. So mindfulness was a huge uh, catalyst of change in my life. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness was created by John Kabat-Zinn. He's a scientist uh, in Worcester, Massachusetts, which happens to be my hometown. And um, he worked at a hospital called UMass Medical Center, and they were working with people with chronic pain and he was doing all the research. And the doctors came to him and asked him, you know, what the research was showing, if the people were getting better through the conventional treatments that they were administering. And the studies showed that they weren't getting better. And um, so John Kabat-Zinn at the time was studying meditation with Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a very famous Buddhist monk. And um, he asked the doctors if he could uh, administer or teach the mindfulness or the, the meditation techniques of Thich Nhat Hanh to the patients. And it was the 1970s, and so the doctors were open to it, and so they, they started what's called now the pain clinic at UMass Medical Center, which has huge success in treating patients with chronic pain through mindfulness and meditation techniques. And John Kabat-Zinn created the name mindfulness. It was originally Vipassana meditation, which comes from Buddhism, but he wanted to make it more secular so that it was more available to the general public and people would be more open to it. So what are the benefits of mindfulness? Um, it reduces stress and anxiety and depression. It improves quality of sleep, lowers blood pressure, it improves digestion and alleviates pain. All of these things are aspects that many people uh, suffer from in their daily lives, and it affects us not only in our personal lives, but also in our work lives. 
the mindfulness meditation helps to bring us into the present moment. We can let go of the past, let go of the future and come into the present and come into the present with consciousness and slow everything down. And that's where all the benefits sort of stem from. In terms of marketing, um, it'll help us clear our minds, improve concentration, enhance creativity. It connects us with our intuition. It improves emotional intelligence, which will help us to um, work better with our team members, with our clients. And it raises our consciousness, which for me is like, um, when I'm more aware, uh, people can see uh, that I'm more conscious when I'm working with them and I'm more apt to be hired again for a job because of my level of consciousness. Mindfulness and marketing. So there's a, a, um, a philosophy in Buddhism that says what we focus on is what we create. And ultimately, it's uh, the law of karma. So what I put out there is what's going to come back to me. And uh, I don't have to wait to vote every four years in an election. I cast my vote every moment, every present moment with my thought, word, and action. So the present is based on my past thoughts, words, and actions. And the future is based on my present thoughts, words, and actions. So alignment is really important, um, especially if we're marketing something. So we want it to have the most success that it can have. And so I need to be in line with thought, word, and action. Otherwise, if I have one that's off alignment, I may lose 30% of that return. Um, also, it's really important that I am conscious of why maybe I'm not aligned with it. And maybe, for example, what can happen, and it happens with a lot of my clients, is they don't like their jobs. And so they're not aligned with what they're doing. And so then they don't have success. And it can happen in marketing. If I'm not aligned with maybe the ethics of the company that I'm working for, it's something to think about in terms of, will I have success? Will I be able to work with this client? Um, and if it's a matter of money, then I can actually consciously say, okay, I'm gonna do this, because I need the money, but then next time I will be more conscious and try to stay aligned. And then if I have that conscious awareness, it the energy will come back to me and the su success of wanting to make money will come back. So it's all about being conscious and aligned and being aware of that circle of energy that I put out there is gonna come back to me. Um, this goes along with what's my seed of intention. So every creation that I have needs to have a seed of intention. If I have no intention, it's kind of like I'm going in circles and there's no direction. It's like a car without putting the address in the GPS. So it's really important that every step of the way in my creation of marketing and, uh, and, and supporting my client that I have an intention and I'm clear with what I want to grow. Um, that will help also and um, is, a, is a very important part of mindfulness and we'll practice that in the meditations. Are we creating from mind or from heart? So it's about all about balance, mindfulness and uh, meditation. It's about finding that neutral space and oftentimes in the material world we work more from mind and not always from heart. And so it's about finding that balance taking into consideration the logics, but also taking into consideration the emotions when I'm promoting and also in my own process of creation and my own process of work. Are we creating uh, an illusion or are we creating authenticity? Again, it's the same thing. People nowadays are all complaining about Instagram and how it's such an illusion. And there are a lot of people that are getting turned off by that. Can we find a balance? Can we find the neutral space between the illusion of like wanting to sell something and making it look good, but also bringing in some sort of reality and authenticity. And that balance will help um, create a solid creation. Otherwise, if it's just in the illusion, the creation might be temporary. It may not be solid. It may not stand the test of time. What do we want for ourselves and the world? So this goes along with the ethics and we may take time to evolve into this part of 
our marketing and into this part of our work, but to have to just be conscious of what I'm putting out there is what I'm coming, what is coming back to me. Do I want that for me? Do I want that for my children? And if not, I may not have success in the work that I'm doing. So I may want to find clients that are more aligned with my level of ethics. And there's no judgment from the practice of mindfulness um, of what is ethically good or bad, because it actually, I'm gonna go into the next slide now, where we talk about the 10 attitudes of mindfulness, and the first one is non-judgment. So not judging, not going into good and bad. Um, we try to transcend this duality and come to a neutral space and see things as they are. So an orange is an orange and an apple is an apple and no one is better than the other. Um, mindfulness is also about patience, slowing things down. Even if you have deadlines and you may be stressed out and you may be um, multitasking to try to take things one step at a time and slow it down and you'll probably end up having more time in the end. Beginner's mind. Um, we carry a baggage with us of all of our knowledge through lifetime and all the influence from society. It's about trying to let that go and just um, having a clean slate and a clear mind so that we're open to channel and we're open to receive the creative information that needs to come through us. Trusting the process. Um, sometimes the process may have ups and downs and trying to stay in that middle path and just observing those ups and downs and not going into them. So trying to trust myself and my solidity with my practice of mindfulness. And this takes time and it, it takes practice. It's a discipline. The next uh, attitude is acceptance or sorry, non-striving. Um, so non-striving is uh, not entering into competition. So I don't want to, uh, push or um, press or stress anything. Um, the more relaxed I am with my work and with what I'm doing, the more relaxed uh, the energy is and it will come back and it won't have any kind of tension or, or resistance within the creation. And that will help a lot with the success of my work. Um, acceptance. So, there's an expression in Buddhism, resistance is persistence and acceptance is transformation. So if I resist something, it's just going to push back and it's just going to go up against me and it's going to stay there longer. But the moment I accept something as it is in the present moment, which is a kind of ending part of mindfulness, gratitude. So when I go into um, uh, those dark moments of insecurities or fears or tension, I like to uh, make gratitude lists because it all of a sudden bumps me up into another vibration of abundance. And that's ultimately what we're trying to create um, is just abundance of, of uh, you could say economic abundance, abundance of joy, abundance of love, abundance of peace, whatever it is that we're trying to create and that will help. Generosity is not just generosity of money, but generosity of time and energy, and especially in terms of receiving. Oftentimes we're doing and we're acting and we're, we're giving and we forget to receive. And again, we're talking about that circular cycle of energy in Buddhism and mindfulness, which is um, giving and receiving and not just one or the other. So the practice um, can be informal, which means I can do it during any kind of activity. So I can practice mindfulness while I'm cooking, while I'm cleaning, while I'm showering. So there's not usually an excuse of why I can't do it, the practice. And um, the more practice that we can do, the more we can integrate it into our lives. Formal practice is what we'll do today where we're actually sitting and doing a formal meditation. So that takes a little bit more um, uh, focus in terms of uh, carving out time for us to do it. Normally, um, I like to use the breath as a focus, but there are all kinds of focuses that we can use, but the breath tends to be probably the most popular focus, and that's what we'll use today. 
And when we're focusing on the breath, the mind will have its normal tendency to drift off into sensations, emotions, and thoughts. Um, that's normal. If that happens a thousand times during a meditation, it's okay. If every time we come back to the breath, we're still med meditating. But if I go off into thought and I start thinking, oh, what am I going to eat? What am I going to um, cook? And what do I need to buy for the recipe? Then I'm thinking. So I need to bring myself back without punishing myself and just bring myself back to the breath and focus again. There may be sounds that may distract me and uh, that's okay too. Uh, so bring yourself back to, to the breath and to the meditation. And also another way that we can bring ourselves into this present moment is through the five senses. So through sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. That automatically puts me in the present moment, takes the past and the future away. And I'm just here and now with my five senses. The sensations, the emotions, and the thoughts can also be used as focuses like the breath, but I'm not going to get into that today because it's more of an introspective type of meditation, which is more complex. So you can see that mindfulness is a discipline. The more we, we apply it, the, the, the better um, we feel. Um, there is a level of ethics because it does align us with our own ethics. And it does create compassion and consciousness, which I feel is um, really helpful in our personal lives and our, um, our work lives. So the phases of a mindful meditation, the first um, part is to have a focus. So today we'll have the focus of the breath. The second part is that I observe where my mind goes. So if my mind goes off into thoughts, I observe the thought and I name it. So if I have a thought of hunger, I just say hunger. I accept that I have the thought of hunger instead of resisting it. I actually love the thought because it's my body saying that I need to eat, but I'm doing a discipline. So I'm going to just tell the thought that I'm going to leave it for a moment and I'll take care of it later and come back. So as I do that, the thought, the, it's like an alarm. And so it'll calm down because it knows that I acknowledge the alarm and it'll just let go. And then I can return to my focus. I like to allow three impulses before moving. So if I feel like I have to move, I just acknowledge it and let it go. And then the second time it comes, I do the same. And the third time it comes, that's when I allow myself to move. Otherwise, I'm just reacting on automatic pilot. And mindfulness is about slowing down, acknowledging things as they are, and then Moving from there. So I want to do that process with my impulses to move as well. So we're going to begin the meditation now. And um, so you can just prepare yourself. You can sit in a comfortable position. You can sit in a chair, have your feet flat on the ground, or you can sit on the floor, cross-legged in a cushion, on a cushion. You want to keep your back straight if you need something to support your back like a wall. You can sit against a wall. And you're just going to gently close your eyes. And just bring your attention to your breath. Without judging it. So just let it be. Without controlling it. Sometimes when we bring our attention to the breath, we control it. So just witnessing the breath without changing anything and just see if it's fast or slow if it's deep or shallow and just bring your attention to the sensations in your body and see if any sensation calls your attention And just observe it, accept it, love the message, let it go, come back to the breath. And bring your attention to your emotions and just see if any emotion stands out. 
It may be a negative emotion. Try not to judge it. Try not to repress it. Try not to reject it. You want to accompany it on its process. So just observe it. Accept it. Love it. Let it go. And come back to the breath. And just observe your thoughts. Just see if you have lots of thoughts or if your mind is clear. See, neither one is better than the other. They're just different and each moment is different. And just observe, accept, love, let go. Come back to the breath. Just observe if you hear any sounds. What's your reaction to the sound? Just do those five steps. See if you can remember them. and come back to the breath. Trying not to move, remembering three impulses before moving. And if you feel like it's really difficult to stay present, bring your five senses in. You can bring one in, you can bring two, you can bring all of them. Letting go of the past. Letting go of what you need to do in the future and just being in the here and now. Be creating space, slowing things down. Allowing yourself to open to this present moment and all that it brings us. So I'm just going to be silent here for a few minutes and I'm just going to allow you to play with this process. Remembering not to judge yourself if your mind goes off a number of times. Just remember to observe, accept, love, let go, come back to the breath. And just slowly bring your awareness back to the room. And just check in with yourself and see if you notice anything different from when we started the practice. Notice how you feel. If you notice any change or not, without judgment, without expectation. And when you feel ready, you can slowly open your eyes and come back. So you can see how this practice, if done over time and for long periods of time, can have like a really powerful effect on our personal health. And then if I'm healthy, then my work world is healthy. And what I do in my life is healthy. So it has a huge impact on, on here's my cat, <laughs> on, uh, on how we live our lives. And it creates peace and harmony and slows things down so we can take things one step at a time. So I just want to say um, thank you for your attention, your presence, your consciousness, your energy, and your participation. And may we all wake up to mindfulness because uh, the more mindful we are, um, the more uh, we can create peace and harmony in our lives and in the world. 
So, uh, and I just wanted to pass my contact information along if anybody wants to get in touch with me. I do teach in groups and privately, and I help people along their healing paths. Um, so you can click the QR code to get to my website and learn more about who I am. And uh, thank you again. I'm really grateful to Pippa and, uh, and Liz, and especially to Lourdes Oliva, who made all of this happen for me today. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And now we will take it, I'll send it back to Pippa, and we'll take questions and answers. Thanks so much, Jordana. That was a really fascinating session. Really, really appreciate it. Um, we will head into the Q&A um, as we've already received some great questions. Um, so thank you very much for everyone that's posted those. Um, in terms of questions, um, so we have had um, really good questions come in, um, looking at um, when to try and make time to practice mindfulness when work is so busy and life is crazy um, and, and somebody doesn't feel that they maybe have the time with their work schedule, what would your advice be to how and when you can act, actually practice mindfulness? Yeah, so the, the, the first um, thing is to practice the informal practice of mindfulness, which is when I'm doing an activity. So I can be washing the dishes and I can bring my attention into the present moment by um, bringing in the five senses, so I can smell the soap, I can uh, feel the water and the soap in my hands, I can take it slow and just bring my attention to every single part of the experience of washing the dishes, and that's a mindful practice. So I can do that with any activity. Um, and I, I always recommend that people start um, with reasonable goals, so I would say carve out five minutes in a day. It's better to do five minutes every day than try to find one hour. You know, one hour is a lot and it's it's usually hard to find. But if I do five minutes a day and I do that every day and then little by little, what I focus on comes back. So the space that I carve out, I'll have more of it in a little bit of time. And then I can carve out 10 minutes and then I'll have even more time. And that's the way the law of karma and the, the law of action and reaction works. So I'm actually planting the seeds for more time every time I sit. Fantastic, that's actually just answered another question that's come in in terms of how long should each session be um, and how long should you try and practice mindfulness. So that has also covered um, that question really nicely, so thank you. Um, mm -hmm. One question um, somebody had asked was, can mindfulness help with physical health um, and possibly external conditions um, that someone might be suffering with, um, for example, skin conditions or hair loss. Um, do you think yeah. that mindfulness can help in that way? For sure. I mean, the condition that I had, Graves' disease, is a hyperthyroid condition. It's a physical condition, but I truly believe that every physical condition has a a root that's not necessarily physical. And it's usually oftentimes that maybe I am uh, not aligned in thought, word, and action, and something's off. So the skin condition is an alarm that something's off in my alignment. And so through mindfulness, I can maybe come to the awareness through that space of practice what that is. Because when I clear my mind, things will come to me in the meditation. And I can even ask questions. For example, this was what I said about you can have a more introspective meditation where you may ask your skin, what, why is it here? What is it, what's the alarm? What's it trying to teach me? And so from there I can learn what's going on and then I can change my life accordingly. And then once I hear the alarm, and I make the changes, I don't need the alarm anymore. So it's gonna go away. And that's what happened with the disease that I had. I listened to the alarms, I made the changes, and it didn't need to sound anymore. And so it went away. Very powerful. Absolutely, thank you. Um, another question, someone had asked, in your presentation you talked about 
mindfulness um, that connects us with our in, is it intuition or in yes um, mm -hmm. and, how can we, and how can we become better at this yeah um when we uh let go of judgment because judgment is based on culture and society so judgment's like an illusion it's not real it's a uh, relative what's good in my culture might be bad in someone else's culture so when i let go of that the only thing i have left is me <laughs> and listening to my voice so i let go of listening to the voice of society and even when it comes to marketing you know like what what, what society would say we should do or we shouldn't do and I just try to listen to my inner voice. When I listen to my breath is when I start listening to my inner voice. I start listening to me. I'm focusing on me. I'm taking, uh, in our daily lives, our focus is so outside of ourselves in the material world. And when we sit for meditation, it's about bringing the focus inside. And so the voice of intuition will start coming through. And the key is, is to listen to it every time it comes through. Because the more we listen to it, the stronger it will be and it will sound. And then we're guided by it. Instead of being guided by things that are relative that may have, you know, other interests that are not necessarily aligned with our own. Amazing. And slightly um, similar to that response and that answer if someone is just really struggling with trying to get their mind to stop and be clear how would how would you advise them to to actually be able to get rid of the thoughts if they they're trying to practice mindfulness but they their mind just won't allow yeah anything to stop okay In action so if I say I want to get rid of something that thing that thought is an energy it has a consciousness and it's actually here but if I get one now if I get put I'm gonna want to get out getting rid of anything with it for a moment it's important but when we're sitting for meditation we can have the intention okay I got the thought I got the alarm I listened I'm gonna do it later but right now I'm in a discipline I'm sitting for meditation I'm controlling my mind so I'm gonna go back to my meditation so that way the thought will know that I acknowledged it and it won't come back. Maybe another one will come and it is a practice and it does take time. Um, sometimes people feel like um, they have to have their minds blank and it's not, meditation is not that. It's just control of the mind. It's a, it's a discipline, it's a focus, it's a game of concentration. Eventually we may get to a place where we just are and we're not thinking but try not to have those expectations and just try to accept and be okay today today the mind is active and maybe tomorrow it'll be different so one more one more question that i had come in um was okay. if there are frustrations and feelings that somebody um may be struggling with that they feel is affecting their job and their work um how how would you control those um frustrations um and what what would you do through mindfulness to try and see some benefit um from the point of view of your, how you are at work and how you can deal with things at work Yeah, um, so again, it's about um, maybe going into those introspection, introspective works and seeing why are we frustrated. Um, you can go into the body and see where your frustration lies in the body. Where do you feel it in your body? And then you can see, you can try to see if you see anything there. You may, in your mind's eye, see a color, a shape, a form um ask that part of your body if there's an emotion um if there's a sensation ask it why it's there if we know why we're frustrated but we never do anything about it it'll just stay um so accompany the frustration get to know it make it your um, team member and um and then from there you can help it uh, but you know what ends up happening most of the time is that we get frustrated <laughs> with our own frustration we resist it we push it away we don't want we, we don't we don't want it there 
So I would say invite it in, observe it, get to know it. That's consciousness. Consciousness is about knowing. It's about uh, knowing things on all levels. And so raise your consciousness, know, get to know that, see what it's teaching you, what it's showing you, and then you can move from there. But then that's the hard part sometimes is the action, taking action on it. Because sometimes those actions may be, I have to change my job, I have to change my partner, I have to uh, move cities, you know, because maybe I'm not happy and I'm frustrated in my life. So, um, it's 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 complex but um but uh the philosophy is pretty basic and easy but the complexity is how to integrate it into our daily lives and the more we practice the more we can uh have more consciousness of how to integrate it and how to use it in 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 our lives wonderful thank you and a question that's come in, do you feel that there is um, a connection between mindfulness and, and self-discipline? So if someone is struggling um, perhaps with something where their, their self-discipline is not as good as they would like it to be, um, that maybe they would like to eat more healthily or be more active um, and needing some discipline around that would you feel that mindfulness is is a way to help them gain that self-discipline for sure because mindfulness in itself is a discipline and so when uh when i put that discipline out there it'll come back to me in many forms and um that's what I find is missing a lot with people. Like they understand the philosophy. It's very simple. It's very easy, but it's a discipline. And, um, but it's an easy discipline because it's five minutes. It can be five minutes a day, or it can be just a moment where I bring myself into the present moment. I have every moment of the day to bring myself into presence. And, um, and it's just that discipline of like consciously coming back um, every moment to my breath and to me and to what I'm experiencing. So, yeah, it's just remembering that. That's the hardest part is just remembering that. And when I do that and I do more of it, it is a discipline. And so it will help me to cultivate discipline in all the other aspects of my life. Definitely. Fantastic. And I just have one last question that's come in. Um, when you were talking about um, accepting um, the thoughts and um, the feelings that will creep in and you have in your mind during uh, mindfulness, does acceptance mean that you have to feel passive or be passive towards things? Yeah, um, a lot of times people think that and they don't want to be passive. It's like, why do I have to, if someone's abusing me, why do I have to accept that? Um, what we have in the present moment is fruit of the past. So we can't change what we have in the present moment. But how I react to everything in this present moment is creating my future. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to have to accept the same things over and over and over again. But what I do need to do is accept what's happening in the present moment so that I'm transforming my future and I won't have to do that again in the future. So it's all about like an evolution of my consciousness. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jordana. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in today's webinar. But I would like to thank you, Jordana, once again for the fantastic presentation and also for CIM Greater London Group for organizing the webinar. So that just leaves me to say a final thank you for joining us today and we hope you've enjoyed the webinar. Take care, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.